Hello YouTube people! Today I'll show you Seiko 5. I'm gonna tell you bad things about the watch, also good things. I'm gonna show you how this watch looks like on a person. And yeah, also if you're interested in the watch that I'm currently wearing, I'll put the link in the description, you can check this watch out. Okay, so Seiko 5. Well, it always seemed to me that this watch is kind of expensive. It currently goes for 120 euros in Europe. And for that kind of price, I was not willing uh, to buy this watch. But I found it used and I paid 80 euros, <laughs> which I still think is a little bit too much. So first of all, why have I bought it? Uh, because every YouTube channel on uh, that I watch about uh, watches, Everybody's talking like, wow, Seiko is amazing. Everybody has to try Seiko. It's like a starter watch. Everybody should begin with the Seiko, especially Seiko 5, etc., etc. And it got deep behind in, in, in my brain. So I kind of gave up eventually and bought Seiko. So what were my first impressions? First impressions are amazing. I mean, this watch looks incredible. I love the size. Size is just, for me, is perfect. And the dial, the hands, indexes, the whole face of the watch looks so incredible. I mean, even after several months that I have this watch, I still look at this watch and I'm like, it looks amazing. But this is the main question. You see, uh, the looks of the watch is kind of the only thing that this watch has going for it. And it has a lot of drawbacks and is the pretty face enough to offset these uh, negatives about the watch? Well, let's talk about that. Well, interesting thing is that, for example, if you want to grow your, grow your YouTube channel, uh, the, what you have to do is to buy things like this, very popular watches, or Casios, uh, Seikos, whatever, and talk nice things about them. Tell everything that's, wow, it's very wonderful watch, amazing watch, I love it, and etc, etc. Because most people who watch those videos are the ones that already have that watch and already love that watch. And they really care what you're gonna say. Don't even try to tell any bad things about that. If you wanna grow your YouTube channel, it's just the easiest way just to please the audience that watch <laughs> that video. But Sorry, that's not really my goal. I just want to speak my mind and I just can't really put the mask on and say, wow, it's amazing watch. Yeah, wonderful. Like, like, subscribe, whatever. And like everybody's happy. No, I want to tell you things how I see them. Yes, that's a lot of sub subjectivity, but let's let's do it. So keep in mind the price, 120 euros. So what do you get for the price? Maybe you get a very good bracelet and clasp. For that price and okay here is the bracelet here are the handlings what's my opinion about it you see i have a very special place for things like that for things like this that special place always sits behind my table and you know what it's a very nice place to put things like this it's like you just don't need to talk about that okay let's let's just let's just move on to the next point okay 120 euros what else do you get um, I mean, maybe the case finishing is wonderful, amazing, like something very special. But the thing is, when my wife saw this watch, the first thing she said was like, oh, that looks very cheap. <laughs> it does look very cheap. And you see, this case finishing is simple to the point where it actually looks cheap. I mean, there is nothing special going on whatsoever. It's not like some sides would be brushed, some sides would be polished and something. No, it's a very plain... Well, it's an offensive design, but it's like, it, it's nothing special. It does look cheap, to be honest with you. Plus and minus. Well, I kind of like this crown. I like the integration. I like the position of the crown. I like how grippy it is, but it doesn't have any kind of engraving. And it is rather difficult to operate. And you do need to operate this crown quite a lot because it does have a day and date function. And it's, well, it's mechanical watch it's not some kind of a quartz which you set and forget you have to set this watch rather often if you don't wear it daily so you have to play with this crown rather often and it's not the best one to do that speaking about the price uh, maybe you get a good loom for the price 
Well, I'm sorry I have to disappoint you on this one as well. I will show you some comparison with other watches, but the Loom is nothing impressive really. Uh, it hasn't got me by surprise or in any other situation. It just, it's not worth talking about really. So, okay, maybe 120 euros, maybe you're gonna get very good movement for this price. Um, that's another thing where I have to disappoint you. This is very bad movement. Yes, it is bad movement because it is not hand windable and it's not hackable. So, which means where I take this watch, it's not going anymore. I can't just wind the crown up and start wearing it. I have to shake it or wear it a little bit to, uh, for the watch to wind up and start going. And I can't set the time very accurately because I can't stop the seconds hand. So why do I care about that too much? Well, the thing is, this particular watch goes a little bit too fast and I want to adjust the movement. And I can't really do that easily because I can't fully wound the watch, which is important for setting up, uh, for adjusting the, the movement. And another thing, I can't stop the seconds hand. How the, how the hell I'm supposed to check the time on, on, on this watch when I don't have a time grapher? I mean, it makes things uh, a, a little bit too complicated for me to, to adjusting this watch. Another thing is uh, the rotor. The rotor is very noisy. I had uh, several very cheap Aliexpress watches with Chinese movements that had very noisy rotors, very annoying. But I wasn't expecting anything else. I mean, they were cheap Chinese watches with no name movements. Even some Miyota movements had very loud rotors. But getting this kind of noisy rotor from the Seiko that cost 120 euros, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is just one off, but the rotor is really, really noisy. It it sounds like it's gonna fall off anytime. So I'll try to record the audio. I mean, I don't... I don't even need to shake this watch too much. It's like... It sounds like broken. So that's not nice. So speaking about this watch not being uh, windable, you have to wear it. So this means that this watch is meant to be your everyday watch. Yeah, because why would you need uh, windability throughout the crown if you're gonna wear it every day, it's gonna be fully wound anyway. So let's look at it as everyday watch. Can it be an everyday watch? And let's move to the next point. 30 meters of water resistance. I mean, I don't have a problem with 30 meters of water resistance on Casio watches that cost 15, 20 euros. And I don't have problem with watches that are extremely like beautiful dressy that are meant to be worn only on Sunday evening in special occasions. Yeah, I don't have problem with water resistance on such watches. But on, but on a watch which is meant to be your everyday watch, 30 meters is not enough. I'm sorry, but it, these two things like daily watch and just 30 meters of water, water resistance, they just don't come together. Yeah, that just doesn't work. And to, moving to the next very similar point is a mineral crystal. Also, I don't have problem with cheap watches that have mineral crystal or watches that are very special for special occasions. I don't care. I'm not going to do anything manual uh, wearing those watches anyway. But this is everyday watch. I would rather have it with a plastic window so I would be able to polish out when I scratch it. Or uh, sapphire crystal would be very welcome also, but mineral crystal, if I scratch it, I can't fix it. And this is everyday watch. I'm definitely gonna scratch it if I'm gonna wear it every day. Like that's inevitable. And that just also disappoints me. A daily watch, which is not really good daily watch. I mean, okay, okay, it's not all bad. Let's see things through different perspective. From the perspective which I personally wouldn't look at, but let's try. So maybe you really want mechanical watch, like you can't even think about quartz watch. Okay. And you really want well-known brand. Me personally, I couldn't care less about the brand name, but you really want well-known brand name. Okay. I also want small watch and you aren't willing to pay too much. So what are your op options? Uh, let's think quickly. Orient, 
Orient makes small mechanical nice watches for similar price. Also Vostok, but Vostok uh, Russian watches have their own unique style going on, which is not for everyone. And Seiko, Seiko 5s. I mean, I can't really think uh, straight from my head from about anything else. So basically that's all the options that quickly come to my mind. And thinking that way, suddenly 120 euros doesn't look that bad anymore. I mean, if you really need mechanical watch, if you really need well-known brand name, you don't really have many other options. So 120 euros suddenly becomes reasonable. <laughs> I still wouldn't recommend it, but if that's the way you look at things, okay, it's not all bad. After all, this is very cute, pretty watch. It has beautiful face. And even though I have mentioned that the case finishing is very, like, cheap looking, but it's un unoffensive. And overall, as a package, it's very well proportioned. The whole watch, it looks nice. And especially this dial. This is one of the most beautiful blue dials I have ever seen. I love those pointy needle hands. I love the applied Seiko logo. It looks wonderful. Even that day date window doesn't destroy the design. It kind of works together well with the overall look. This blue dial, it has this very interesting shade that goes in and out of blue and black. It's really impressive. It's really impressive. But is it enough to justify the price? I mean, you see, let's try to look at this watch even from the perspective where I don't speak about the price. Let's forget the price, okay? I mean, there are major things that don't come together very nicely. non widable watch, which is meant, well, obviously for every day, which doesn't have proper water resistance. It's, it still makes my brain hurt, things like that. I mean, no, even, even if I forget the price, I can't see this watch the way where I could recommend this watch. I mean, pretty face is not enough. Even if it would have better water resistance, uh, better crystal, I would put it higher up in my tier list. But now, where does it go in my website, thomaswatchreviews.com? As, as I said, I can't recommend this watch. That's where it goes, into no nope tier. You feel free to dislike the video, yeah, whatever, man. But I, I have to speak my mind. I just can't make videos, you know, trying to please the audience. I don't like that. I just like speaking my mind. You agree with me or disagree, you know, it's, after all, it's my opinion. It's the way I see things. And you're free to do whatever you want. If you like the watch, yeah, go for it, buy, for, buy it. But my advice would be, uh, look for the used one. If you buy smart, if you don't like it, you can sell it for the same price and don't lose money. And if you don't really care about the price, about the money that much, I mean, there are so many better options at higher price levels. Why do you need this one, particular one? I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye.